Okay, Toby, thank you very much for the introduction and thank you very much everybody for coming and taking a look at this. I'm going to give you a quick introduction to why we uh, have built this product. I'll show you kind of an out overview of what it looks like and then find out your feedback and then go into more deeply into the talent sourcing, talent research, talent intelligence solutions that we've developed. So the reason that we built this product is because um, in, in sales enablement, there are technology products which can help salespeople to very quickly access, here's a cold call script, here's a LinkedIn outreach introduction in mail message, here's how to get somebody's attention if they're not getting back to you, here's how to overcome early stage objections, here's how to structure a demo or a first stage meeting, here's what to follow up with afterwards, Here's how to overcome the objections you're going to get at that point. Here's how to negotiate on pricing and what the how the conversation might go. Here's all of the content assets and tools and props and calculators and things that you need that do not live in Salesforce, but were previously in SharePoint, on Google Drive, on local folders, in your brain, all over the place, on Chrome extensions. And what sales enablement has done is created better processes for sales and sales enablement technology has created a playbook, a suite of things that you need to manage a deal from cold call through to onboarding the customer. As I was learning about this in 2022, I was thinking, how do we deliver this for recruiters? How do we give them all the marketing assets they need, all the talent assessment assets they need, all of the talent sourcing knowledge and assets that they need, all of the talent intelligence that they need to get their jobs done, to get jobs filled, to act as genuine business partners to the, to the organization? And my instinct was we don't do it at all. So I did 200 hours of focus groups last year. And what I found was my instinct was probably about 80% correct. So as Jacob, who's on the call here, once said on, on a post on Facebook that I really enjoyed, uh, we typically throw, we hire recruiters and throw them in at the deep end. We might give them an ATS, we give them a phone, we give them a LinkedIn account, and then we tell them to get on with the job. And in one day, they're hiring a receptionist, a financial controller, and a back-end web uh, designer. I, I mean, these, 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 there's no, we need to understand all these different jobs. We need to do stakeholder management. We need to be expert marketers. We need to be expert talent intelligence people. We need to do so many different things. And we're expecting singular recruiters to be able to do all of this. Now, in a company like the one that Toby works in or some other major global, you know, conglomerates, you've got a lot of things that are maybe more segmented. But I still know from the focus groups I did that people are spending a lot of time on Teams typing, hey, does anybody know where I can find this policy? Does anybody know um, how we go about hiring in Manila? Does anybody know where I can get a job description? Has anybody got a job description for that team? You know, whatever it is. People are constantly asking each other if they've got things that they need. So there is probably 20% of organizations that I found um, in, in my research are using maybe a share, some sort of a SharePoint or in maybe a smaller organization, they're using a Confluence page or a Notion page or something like that to do a bit of knowledge sharing and collaboration. But because they've not been set up for talent acquisition, they tend not to be the optimal user experiences, especially SharePoint. So we set out to build a uh, recruiter enablement workspace and we have unashamedly taken our inspiration from a technology product called Highspot. Just in the same way as in my last company, Candidate ID, we took our inspiration from Marketo. So um, we think there's lots and lots of um, inspiration that we can gain from mainstream sales and marketing technologies. And you know some of them we can apply into recruiting and make recruiting better. Um, interested to know just if anybody's got any comments around the subject and what we're trying to solve. We're trying to make it easier for recruiters to access all the things they need within less places 
um, and, and, and just get them all faster and spend less time asking each other if they've got something and spend less time trying to recreate things from scratch. Any comments about the, about the, the overall broad issue? Uh, my only comment, and I'm, I'm loud as always, uh, the more you were talking, the more I thought, do you know what, I, I like the fact it's not a size thing. In the sense of some issues with MTA, you only get a big companies or you only get small companies. And I think this problem is equally useful, or this solution is equally useful in both for very different reasons. Small, smaller companies, it's a one-stop shop. You've got everything, everyone's on the hub. It's really tight. You might know everyone, but it gives you one solution to find everything. Whereas bigger companies, it's so big, you get lost in the information. So it's complete other end of the spectrum as to why the solution is, or what, and the problem's there, and then the solution's there. But I, I like that. I like the fact that it's it it would scale really fluidly across. Yeah, what we found is in smaller organisations with a team of I don't know ten in recruiting, they are coming up against situations they have never come up with before. They're constantly recruiting jobs they've never re recruited for before, and coming up against like with challenges that they 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 need quick solutions to. So that's where we're appealing to them. Large organizations, there's nearly always mass confusion. And um, so, yeah, we want to we want to really eliminate that. And that's stressful. It's really stressful. OK, so I'm going to give you a quick um, I'm going to share my screen and show you how we're doing the like overall what the overall workspace looks like. Get your opinion on that. And then once I've got your opinion on that, I want to go on to the things that are more specifically to do with, you know, your specialist subjects. So. As a recruiter, I would log into Poetry, and I've got all these different tiles on my desktop. And they are, I click onto the tile, it represents a solution, takes me into the solution, and the solutions are really easy to use. There are solutions for marketing, for operations, for learning, and for tools. As you can see, you would add in your third party solutions in here so that it's really easy to access those. No longer are people saying, What's the URL for that marketplace solution we, we've got access to? Because it's on the desktop. They just click on that. No more. Um, what's the ATS? Click on that. It's in there. Okay, so it just opens up. Um, now, if I am a recruiter, the first thing I would typically do is I might go into the research. I'm working on a job I've never worked on before. I might go into the research solution, which I will come back to because I want to go do a bit more deep dive into that. And I'll find out about the job. I'll find out about um, what's involved in that job, um, who hires people like that, what's the typical salaries, that type of thing. Once I've done that, I'll go and find some candidates. So I'll go into this Boolean builder, I'll always go into find. And if there's nothing in there, I'll go into create. So this is for a data job. It is a data analyst. It's based in New York City. I want jobs similar to data analysts. So I click Inspire Me, and it'll give me some synonyms. Uh, some of those are not actually particularly relevant. So I'm going to get rid of those and just stick with data analyst. I want locations close by New York City. And I build my Boolean string, search Google, and here's a bunch of data analysts in and around New York City. OK, so now that I've found some candidates, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to reach out to these individuals. I'll go into my social media outreach area, click create. Um, this is for a, a data job. It is a business intelligence analyst and it's based in Los Angeles. Um, I'm typically in 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 UK English or our workspace is in UK English. But yours might be in a different language. So if not, if I'm normally working in the UK, but actually this particular job, of course, because it's in the US, I'll change that to USA English. Generate. It's now going to create for me some suggested text for the outreach messaging. Um, now, this outreach messaging is based on what's the typical career pain points for a business intelligence analyst and what is our EVP? How does that address those poten potential career pain points? And therefore, it's trying to create language which it thinks is going to be influential for, to, for getting that person's attention and getting them to respond. I can also build things like um, social media posts and job adverts and um, objection handling messages and email copy. 
Uh, I can also build candidate interview questions. So let's take a look at this one. Create candidate interview questions. Hiring manager um, has asked me to help create some interview questions for her for a quality control specialist job based in Glasgow. And we always do technical questions for our manufacturing jobs. It's for the first stage. I click inspire me. This is now going to take a few seconds and it's going to create three technical scenarios and questions related to that scenario. I do not need to be any kind of expert in what's a quality control specialist all about to be able to you know, create this now. So technical question, you're responsible for ensuring that all products meet the company's quality standards. Batch of products been flagged for not meeting them. How would you approach, approach identifying the root cause? What steps would you take to prevent this from recurring? How would you communicate findings? What tools or methods would you use to ensure the accuracy? Okay, three different options. I then, um, the hiring manager is being very fixed with me around what we're looking for. So um, I think we can be more creative about it because it's really hard to hire for. Go into my skills-based hiring solution. In here, this is for a logistics job. I oh, know that's not that one. It is a, let's do another manufacturing job. It's a manufacturing engineer and it's based in Dallas. Click inspire me. What this is now going to do is it's going to tell me which jobs have got an overlap in skills needed to do the manufacturing job. Okay. Uh, something's gone wrong in there. Stephen could tell me what's gone wrong in there. Do I do a different one? Let's do a different one. See if the problem is. Okay. Inspire me. Nothing like a live demo for something to just go wrong right in front of you. Stephen, any Stephen, ideas any why idea? that went wrong? Uh, I'll look at it just now. If you go, keep continuing, we'll come back to it. Hmm, okay. Uh, right. So, um, I don't. I want. I'm working on a new job, and I don't want to go into all the different solutions. So I can click on playbooks, create playbook, and this is for a marketing job. It is a content marketing executive and it's in San Francisco. I want all of these different assets. I click select, then build playbook. There's a Boolean string for that job. There's a brand advert for that job. It's now building out candidate interview template. It'll then build out a conversation guide, which is like an elevator pitch or a talk track type of thing. And it's gonna build out about 30 assets and it'll do that in about three minutes. While it's doing that, a couple of other things in here. So. We do have some uh, capability in the learning area. We've got this learning team learning solution. So here's how we do advertising. Here's how we do assessment. Here's how we do CRM. Down at the bottom, you can see I've got admin buttons. So as an admin, I can easily click edit and then get rid of that image, upload a deck or a video. And I can also go and just change that text so that I can make it relevant to me. I can delete that card. I can click add to add in another learning card. There's some analytics on that solution. So you can get to see who's actually taken part in the um, in the research itself. OK, as as you can see. So who, who's done the learning itself? Um, as you can see, this is building out and it'll take about three minutes. I'll stop sharing for a second just to find out. Um, if you have any comments or questions before I then go a bit deeper into the research related and talent intelligence related um, solutions that we've got. I'll show you them specifically, do a bit of a focus on those. Jacob. Yeah, no, it was just, um, I've, I've already written a um, note on it. So you okay. started with that a data analyst in New York and then you showed us 10 other jobs, you know, so I was just a bit confusing. Uh, you know, I think it would be more beneficial if we stayed with one job and showed us the the flow from start to finish on that one job rather than jumping in between all sorts of other positions. OK, yeah, no, good, good point. I think what I was just trying to do was just to demonstrate that this is not like specific to one particular type of location or one particular job function or something like that, and that it's very, very flexible. But thank you for that feedback. It's a, It's a good point. Bob? Uh, as you make those changes, or I guess maybe the better question is, who has access to 
make edits to some of those um, assets and artifacts besides the admin? Like, do you? Yeah, um, I can go. I can go in. people to be able to <clears throat> share, you know, and contribute to the to the you know corpus of assets. Yeah. So I can go into. I can click on the uh, uh, admin button. I can then go down to uh, permissions. Where's permissions gone? Oh yeah, there. And then in here, I can choose. So as I'm building, for example, a playbook, which has got like 20 to 30 assets in it, <clears throat> you may want some of these to be generated by poetry. And there might be certain things you want absolutely locked down. And only like, for example, in here, I could select uh policies okay action type is disable edit click save that means that the only people that can edit that are people who uh you know have access which is the admins i could go for example brand adverts and then disable access and what that means is recruitment marketers will continue to have access to that solution but normal members as in recruiters will not have access to that solution so you can you can absolutely pick and choose. If I want like this playbook, for example, it's unlikely that large organizations would use the image created. Uh, you know, they would always want images to be based on what you've got in your library and it would select from your library and bring this in rather than creating an image for that. But if, for example, in this playbook, um, interview questions are absolutely fixed, then you can lock down that solution so that it will retrieve the existing ones Whereas for, say, a social media post, um, it, you, you can potentially, um, you know, have it generate something. Did that answer the question? Yeah, yeah, no, that's good. The, um, the other question I had was around, um, like, how, oh, in the, there was a, some verbiage in there around, um, well, you don't even need to know the subject matter. Here, here's questions to ask of this person. Um, that might be true to ask the question, but you still need to know what's a good answer in some fashion, right? So, is that something that would be available, you know, mid interview or somewhere yeah. where they can actually upskill while they're hearing the answers? Yeah, yeah. No, it's a, it's a, it's a. A great comment, and that will be a next step, which is what does a good answer look like and what does a what does a bad answer look like and giving more context. For some people, they're going to be creating this to give it to the hiring manager because the hiring manager doesn't have time to think about their own questions. They probably don't need to know what's a good answer and what's a bad answer for a lot of the technical type stuff. They can they can probably mark that without knowing. If the recruiter's doing the interview, then yeah, they 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 will need to know that. We haven't built that yet. But on, honestly, if we prioritized that, it would be done by 11 a.m. on Monday morning. So it's a it's a very quick thing to 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 add in. Just to expand on that, Adam, we're we're going to yeah. build um, quite a lot of non AI driven resources within each solution, which will essentially be bespoke from you know company to company. What looks like what good looks like to you might not look good elsewhere, et cetera, et cetera. So for interviews primarily, that will probably be a company scorecard, what does good look like, and interview conduct. And those things will be able to be accessed, you know, from that solution. That will vary depending on solution to solution. And um, so first it was getting the information right, and then we'll do the ability to interact with that in a bespoke manner as a, as a next step. Nice. Okay, cool. Thanks. Okay. <clears throat> I'm going to... Um... Yeah, no, I, I agree, Jacob. What 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 looks good is hugely individual, and and it, it perhaps can't be built and used off the shelf. In which case, the people responsible for that particular thing, like interviewing, for example, they can just add in what the ones that are company approved, and they get locked down, and nobody can add anything new. So, functionality for that. I'm going to come on to some of the talent research and talent intelligence solutions that are in here now. What I will say is, if you are a deep talent intelligence expert, you're going to look at this and you're going to go, yeah, but I mean, that's not the level of what I do. So it is not going to be good for telling you, like the hiring manager has said to you, like the head of that team has said to you, I want to understand what is the 
link between the genetic code of underwater basket weavers in Botswana and um, the inside leg measurement of penguin trainers in Panama, right? It's not, it's not going to give you that, like, so that we know where to put our factory. It's not going to, it's not going to give you that. It's going to be, but, but what, it, what this is for is for the sort of thing which is going to help recruiters to become genuine business partners and advisors. Okay. So I was showing this to somebody at a major UK bank um, earlier on today, and he, he said, this can help this can help my recruiters to know more about the job than the hiring manager not the technical things but pretty much everything else around it and so i thought that that was quite quite useful uh, interesting way, way of looking at it so let me click share and let's go on to some of the more relevant solutions to the subject at hand okay the first one i'm going to go into is personas and insights so I go into I, I need to understand more about a particular job. I go into personas and insights, and it is a um, sales job. It is a business development manager job, and it is in uh, Barcelona. Right. I click generate, and now what this is going to give me is a lot of the classical kind of marketing persona type stuff like. What's their educational experience and their work experience and their current salary and their professional goals and things like that. It's also then going to give me workforce insights. Now, we are going to be splitting these two because I think there's probably a slightly different reason to use the marketing personas as there is to the, the workforce insights. But the reason we put it in here is really just to test it with our existing users and find out what they think. Okay, so for a business development manager based in Barcelona, this is the kind of uh, education they might have. Here's some of their work experience, current salary, um, uh, and references where it's getting that information from. Here's their professional goals, career pain points, what might tempt them. What might tempt them, again, is looking at our EVP against an, in, in an answer to what are their career pain points. Where do they seek professional information? Meaning this is a, 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 you know, useful for, for marketing channels. What's their hobbies and interests? Icebreakers, marketing channels, and then any other notable factors for people doing this job. A bit further down, workforce insights. So what are the key locations that are close by to Barcelona? Uh, L'Hospitalet de Llobregat, Badalona, Sabadell, okay. Workforce demographics. Estimated 1,500 to 2,000 people um, in Barcelona doing this job. And in the past three months, there's been a, around 150 job postings for this role. Sources for that include local job boards and, and, and LinkedIn. A bit more about job market dynamics. Gender, 60% male, 40% female, uh, typically. Key issues in their sector. Talent mobility and flow, where have they gone from and to? Madrid, Lisbon and Milan. Uh, some talents move to cities like Amsterdam and, Bar and Berlin. Okay, this is all tech people, I guess, these cities. Job title changes. What did they do before and what did they uh, go on to do after? And the potential employers, the, the major employers of business development managers in that particular location. So um, pers uh, marketing persona, workforce insights. I want you to know that these are going to be two in, in two separate um, uh, solutions. And the only reason, as I mentioned, we put them in here is because it is uh, we're just really testing out the insights. The second one I want to touch on is battle cards. So battle cards, I've got a uh, competitor, which is um, Walmart. And the domain is walmart.com, I'm going to guess. Create competitor. Okay, and here's the battle card for um, Walmart. I'm still having a quick refresh on that before it does it. Okay, so here's some background on Walmart, some information on the company. Uh, here's where their people are. There used to be a lot in the UK, but of course they sold that business to me. Okay, 
Probably more important, I think, is I click Generate Insights, and now what this is going to give me is what are their strengths as an employer, weaknesses as an employer, culture, locations, compensation. Okay, so I want to know about their culture. Focus on innovation, strong community engagement, inclusive and diverse work, works, workplace, leadership, some recent leadership changes, uh, notably, this person was appointed as CTO. Uh, strengths, career growth opportunities, comprehensive employee benefits, extensive global reach, weaknesses, limited flexibility, controversial labor practices, and high workload and stress. Is this the sort of thing that you and your team would go and like spend a few days going and being able to develop? No, it's not. But I think this is probably pretty useful information for recruiters to get that's good enough to have an interesting conversation with the hiring manager. But we don't. We make absolutely no assumptions in, in what we do. And so I can't wait to find out what you think. Just one more before I, um, and I'm gonna do it in our staging environment because this is uh, what is getting launched tomorrow. So if I go into my research, I'm working on a job I've never worked on before. I go into research, I click create. I need to understand this job. So, oh no, I'm not, I'm going to the wrong place, aren't I? I'm going, I need to go in a secret back door bit. Preview, research. Okay, so this is for a um, uh, healthcare job. It is a physical therapist and the location is Los Angeles. I want to understand the jobs. What are the main responsibilities for this job? What are the average salary and benefits? and what qualifications and certifications are required to perform the research. Okay, so qualifications are these things. Average salary and benefits is this. And main responsibilities is this. So that's given me in just a few seconds, I'm noticing we've got pounds sterling here for a US job within the, as I mentioned, this one's in our staging environment, so it's not, it'll be going live tomorrow. So still one or two quick things. Okay, fine. Now I want to understand a bit more about like companies. Okay. Which companies employ the most of these people? And which companies have the highest Glassdoor rating for this role? Perform research. Stephen, do I need to come out of that before I do this? Yeah, I'll add it to the I'll add it to the bottom. Oh, it's going to add it to the yeah, bottom, I see. Yeah, yeah. All right, okay. Yeah. Companies with the best glass door rating for physical therapists in Los Angeles are these three. And which organizations employ the most? It's these ones. Okay. So uh, anything else that's like intelligence research type related? I think that's I think that's the, the main things. So uh, there was the... Personas and personas and workforce labor workforce insights. There is the um, uh, research where you can find out more about jobs and about companies. And then there's battle cards for competitor intelligence. I just had a question about the persona, and maybe it's just a personal uh, thing. Like that, the way it was viewed, especially when you got down into the data in paragraph form, as as opposed to a list. I find annoying personally, just as a feedback. Um, it's yeah, it's harder for the eye to to just go glance through. Um, I think I said one... that to Stephen approximately eighty minutes ago. I said exactly yeah. that, <laughs> and I and I said I said to Adam what I'll I'll say to you, Randy. Um, well, actually, I won't exactly say what I said to Adam um, because those those are not things you can say to people that you've just met once. Um, but you know, I think realistically, all we were trying to do with the way it is just now is present the information to find out if the information is useful. And now we're going to redesign the information. So it will be more akin to the way that you've just seen research um, or the way that you've just seen battle cards. Uh, as an aside, um, I think it's worth noting, we'll be adding into those insight sections where people are coming from into enter an organization, uh, where people are leaving the organization and going to, what the headcount growth is, um, by role level and also um, by job kind of department level as well. So, and those will be in like graph format that are interactive that you can dive into a little bit more. It, it will come as absolutely no surprise. And I, I don't really mind saying this, that 
we have done really extensive research in what talent intelligence tools are out there, what's offered at a really basic level, and then we've tried to offer that plus a little bit more. <laughs> you know, it is essentially where we're at. So it's like, you know, what do you get from LinkedIn Talent Insights? What do other tweaks offer you? Okay, well, how can we, you know, call that through APIs? How can we use LLMs to get that information? How can we scrape that information from XYZ? You know, and really what? display it in a handy way. That brings up my other question is like, and maybe you said it and I was zoning out, but what's the source of this? And I, that's something that, is, that I always ask, no matter where I'm looking yeah. at it, is is I want to know that source so that I, A, if I question it and I, I do this with my own research, make sure that I cite it. I want people to question my research because yes. I'm not all knowing. Like, am I looking at th looking at whatever we're looking at through a, 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 the wrong lens? Um, yeah. Yeah. So, so there's a couple of a couple of things related to source, which will just some of it is just uh, scraping information from websites and, and online presences. Some are paid for APIs um, through PDC and things like that to bring real insights about uh, you know LinkedIn and company locations and uh, you know all the stuff that I just talked about there. And then some of it is LLM, you know AI driven information that is 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 coming back as well. So and and the aim you know, realistically will be to enhance that. So it will be to use them to bounce off each other so that it's fact checking in a circle and it's providing back. I've got a really, really strict um, guideline and prompt structure in the back end, which excludes us from um, hallucinating or adding information that is unnecessary. So if, like Adam just did the research there, if, if it doesn't know, it will actually just give you the heading and it will just give you a message that basically says, I don't know that, I'm sorry. You know, like, and and that's that's the kind of, I'd much rather give you no information than I would give you false information, right? Mm -hmm. Because that's that's key. Um, so we've really tried to be be careful with that because, yeah, um, I mean, Adam sent me a message in December, I think, and said, hey, you're going to join Poetry in uh, April and I need you to learn prompt engineering, just so you know. Um, and I've gone and done roughly about 300 hours of studying, gained a qualification and done about, you know, six LinkedIn learnings and all those types of things just to try and keep up. And what I kind of found out through all, all of that is that nobody really knows what they're talking about. And we're all just trying to navigate it, you know, at light speed together. Um, but, you know, this kind of like hallucinating of information is like a really kind of, you know, People go, people read it, take it for face value, and they go, oh, that's great. But actually, it just turns out it was made up on the spot. So I've had to set really, really strict guidelines to make sure that doesn't happen. And it, it, it really reminds me of like the earlier days of talent sourcing. And we're all trying to work out what's a really great way of like looking under all the rocks to get all the information and that sort of thing. There's a lot of parallels in that. We've got Bob. One, and one other thing, one other thing I will say just quickly here is, um, if we can cite the source and it is reputable, we want, we 100% do that on the platform. So you'll see like sal salary information will have uh, Glassdoor pay scale indeed, or it will have Glassdoor pay scale and LinkedIn insights. Um, you know, if we if something comes from LinkedIn, we'll we'll tell we'll tell you that. You know, we'll, we're aiming to display the source natively so that it's not just guesswork, so that you can read that up front. So Bob and then Lena. So um, I guess the first comment is um, I agree with what you're doing, Stephen. I, I think people have expressed concern. I just talked to somebody yesterday who talked about and has posted about um, not using generative AI for for primary sort of research and just being careful there. So it sounds like you guys have that, that covered. Um, my next comment was sort of tied to probably what Randy was talking about. If you could take the battle cards and have it just very quick snapshot of like maybe the strengths and weaknesses and a, and a little comparison chart to how you said you could probably look at multiple competitors at once and just say this guy's gonna this guy has this can has done their homework uh, they're probably looking at these other you know yeah. um, you know competitors and in one shot you can see where your strengths and weaknesses so that they can just answer any of those questions or address any of those concerns like really, really quickly. Um, yeah. So that would be good. And then um, the last point, oh, just a just a thought on the, the currency thing. I know you were in a staging environment, Adam, but I was curious if maybe the question for Steven, 
if maybe because you said UK, you know, English, it was using currency associated with UK or something, or totally separate. It's just the the prompts are different in staging, so I don't I don't have uh, I have a dedicated location based prompt for currency, um, in our live environment. Um, I've just yeah. not updated updated yeah. the other one. And um, by the way, starting to think that you all have a a tap into Adam and I's WhatsApp line because uh, today he messaged me saying. Uh, we really need to do comparison charts for battle cards on strengths and weaknesses uh, versus other companies and yourself. And I'm like, okay, cool. So, uh, Lena, if you say something that we're already thinking about, I'm going to have to leave this call because it's getting a bit freaky. <laughs> well, uh, you're going to have to leave this call to get on with it. <laughs> the data is the data's there, right? You just need to surface yeah, it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. yeah. Lena? Uh, so, I just love to add passion. Uh, when you talk about mitigating all those issues uh, against uh, hallucinations. And uh, I was just curious, and this is quite a technical uh, question. Uh, are you solving uh, purely uh, with prompt engineering or uh, trying to ground in, in your own data? I believe you're collecting quite a lot in the background as well. Yeah, so we, we use our OpenAI as the core large language model. We're doing retrieval augmented generation. So we're learning from things like, you know, if you up if you upload your hiring guides or things like that, it's reading all of that. We are not using information from one company to benefit another, other than metadata around what is what gets the most thumbs ups and thumbs downs and positive mm -hmm. sentiment. So if, for example, a piece of research gets lots of thumbs ups and another one gets lots of thumbs downs we're looking at what are the what are the components of that research and all the ones that gets the thumbs ups across all of the different companies that are using this 360 or so companies that are using this what what are the what are the, what are the components of something that gets thumbs downs mm -hmm. and so that goes into the uh, prompt engineering mm -hmm. Uh, that that goes back to returning. We wouldn't create our own large language model. We wouldn't fine tune a large language model. Um, the first one costs billions, and the second one we think is a, a quite an inefficient way of doing things. Mm -hmm. um, but it's it's based on the the sophisticated element of this is uh, is RAG retrieval augmented generation. Okay. Yes, and that uh, feedback loop uh, sounds so so cool. Uh, I have another question, and uh, it was on uh, that skills-based hiring, and uh, sadly it went wrong, but uh, I, I'm so curious. Uh, so it is more like uh, uh, trying to understand the job role, but from skills perspective. Yeah, let's let's do it in staging instead, just, so skills-based hiring. On, yeah, Create. If you go into live, you can click on an example, Adam, as well. Come up. IT consultant. Los Angeles, inspire me. And yeah, what it's going to do is it's going to go, right, an IT consultant. Yeah, that's another point, actually. Of course, I can just go into one that we've already built. Um, I'll come back to that just, one that I've just, just for quickness. set off in a second. Yeah, skills-based hiring. Okay, go into this one. Information technology, network engineer based in Hungary. Here's the jobs that have got the same skills, mm -hmm. a shared transferable skills as a network engineer. Here's the essential tasks for that job. Here's the essential skills and competencies, essential soft skills, assessment strategies for this type of job, and an implementation strategy for skills-based hiring on that job. Now, a next step for this could be turn this into a string that allows you to search your Workday database or something like that so that we can just at the bottom go, okay, create search, click the search, opens up Workday and, and, and does that search. Uh, as you can see, here's 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 the one that I just asked for, IT consultant in Los Angeles. Here is the jobs that have got the same, same kind of skills as an IT consultant, essential tasks. At this point, I think what this is good for is if your hiring manager has quite a fixed mindset around what they're looking for, you can use this to maybe challenge that a little bit. Um, or you are looking for ways to be creative and take to that hiring manager, look, there's not a lot of people that can do exactly what we're looking for, but here's some alternatives. What do you think? And you can use it as a, you know, for talking points with that individual. So is it right to say that your platform will come with lots of pre-populated stuff and later as you go, you personalize everything for yourself or no? Yeah, nothing's pre-populated. No, you and don't. It, 
Mm -hmm. It doesn't it doesn't come with it. When you set up your workspace, it is an empty workspace. Uh -huh. You you add in mm -hmm. all of the your like your marketing assets and the teams and hiring mm -hmm. managers and things like that. You bulk upload all that sort of stuff. Probably takes two hours. And then once it is uh, configured, you can start using it. And it might be that admins build out a lot of this over like a week's period. They, they spend a couple of hours every day building out all of the research and the competitors. You can upload a big list of competitors and it'll populate battle cards for all of them. Um, yeah, but it, it, it's not coming pre-populated with mm -hmm. like those things. Last question, if I can. Uh, it's extremely interesting uh, uh, about personas. Uh, so I, I guess the goal is uh, to create a kind of uh, card, how to attract those sort of people, isn't it? And how it changes with, uh, I don't know, with uh, experience levels or with age groups. Oh, for in terms of personas? Mm -hmm. um, experience levels and age groups. Yeah, um, hadn't so hadn't really thought about that. But I mean, a persona for a so if you typically from what I know of a, of marketing personas, a marketing persona is called is is based on a specific named individual. Mm -hmm. So that named individual has an age and is a certain um, ethnicity and is a certain gender and all that sort of thing. That is a, like strictly that is what mm -hmm. a marketing a marketing persona is. So we've not we've not done it quite as as strictly as that because we've not looked at their age is this, but we've added in certain things like their typical work experience is this number of years. Now, mm -hmm. actually, could that be could that potentially be a little bit discriminatory because somebody who is a career individual contributor and that's what they want to do for a job, and it and they've got twenty five years experience, and it's saying typically these people have got three to six years experience or whatever. Is that problematic? I'm not sure. Could be. But it's an interesting, interesting question. You can't filter it according to like years of experience and that type of thing. And I, I don't think we would want to, but it's definitely a very interesting point. Yes, because I believe everything would change us with the experience or skill sets. Well, it's well, that would link to the job title, I would I would think. Mm -hmm. Maybe, yeah. Yes, it, if you have levels uh, in job that, yes. Uh, mm -hmm. uh, Stephen, there's been a lot of questions on the chat here. It looks like you've been I've answering, been answering them. I've been answering them all, yeah. Uh -huh. Okay. Right. I want to be respectful of everybody's time. We're already four minutes over. Um, if anybody's got any additional questions, I, I, I've got another 10 minutes if you want to stay and ask any other questions. But like, if you want to if you want to shoot off, no, no absolutely no offense. Um, but please, if there's anything that you wanted to uh, say to me in terms of like comments, if you thought it was really ugly, but you don't feel like being that confrontational in front of everybody, then just send me a message and I'm happy to hear that information. Well, I'm not, but I, I, it's gr anything negative in particular. We don't really need to know what's good. We only need to know what you don't like. Um, and incidentally, if anybody wants to sign, you can sign up. This is free for one person in your organization forever. So if any of you want to sign up and have a play around yourself, uh, you're very welcome to. You just go to the website, poetryhr.com, uh, sign up. If somebody in your organization's already got an account, then I would <coughs> probably let you know who that is and ask them to give you access. Um, or, or I would send them a message and say, hey, look, are you happy with you know, me adding somebody else onto your workspace? Yeah, thanks very much. Toby, is there anything you wanted to no, finish, I, I think, finish off on? As the... I think there's some really cool things. I, I think it's really interesting. I think um, for, for me, like, like we said at the outset, like that, I, I don't think it's going to be a raw TI play, and that's not what this is. But I think for what it is in terms of upskilling recruiters, getting the, the, the ball rolling, getting them thinking about stuff, the agility of like if I'm a sourcer going from manufacturing to software and suddenly I can get, all right, just what's a baseline foundational knowledge that I need? I think this is going to address a lot of those issues really nicely. So um, I'm very excited. I know we've got a couple of bits in the comments and also something on LinkedIn around uh, the recording. So um, yeah, 
Adam, I'm, I'm sure you're comfortable sending the recording around for people that have registered for the event, etc. But um, yeah, yeah, from I'll my side, with I you. it's been great. I'll share it with you for distribution. And uh, just one last quick comment from me. It, absolutely, I agree. It's not a raw TI um, solution. Very deliberately, we want to um, create as many useful solutions for recruiters as we can. And so while I'm not going to suggest that this is like um, uh, horsefly or something like that, if it is good enough for a recruiter, then that's really great. And what we would expect TI people to be is maybe the guardians of the intelligence related solutions in here mm -hmm. so that they're maybe coming in and doing just a quick sense check around, you know, the setup of those solutions and uh, to, to make sure that hopefully there's an opportunity for you to be able to really scale your expertise without having to do everybody else's kind of research and things for them. I think there's a, a real deliberate thing that we've tried to do here which is build something for the boots on the ground and and quite often with you know platforms as a whole we can really apply like get ex admin people excited and like high level ta people excited and they go okay recruiters now use this and everybody just goes but how <laughs> you know and and why and like and then what so what we're trying to kind of provide is what's the information we can put at face value in five clicks or less that will mean that you'll be the way that I the cheesy way that I always kind of describe it is enable you to have more powerful conversations. So whether that's with hiring managers, whether that's with you know candidates, whether that's with your manager, it just kind of puts you in the driving seat a little bit more as somebody that is doing the day-to-day -day role. And then there is always these other tools to optimize all of these aspects that you would have a subscription for if you were the head of something, right? And that that's the kind of way that we've we've tried to build it. Um, Adam and Stephen, uh, first of all, thank you for taking us through this. Um, the, the the last comment I have is I, I don't know based on the organizations that you're talking to, you know, or your, at your clients or prospects in terms of their level of um, AI maturity more broadly. Like, have they implemented, you know, policies? Do they have a strategy or whatever? But just in terms of the learning content that you have there, it might be good to have something around like responsible AI, human centric AI kind of, you know, principles that just gives them a little bit more, you know, confidence that they're not just, you know, grabbing random shit and, you know, think it sounds good. And that's, you know, I'm going to go with that, you know. When you commented on that on recruiting brain food earlier today about pop.ai or I think it's called something like that, um, that I, I I did I did note that and think yeah I wonder if we need to be the the one difference is there's no candidate profiles in here there's no matching in here that type of thing yeah. however we are creating assessment related assets we are creating sourcing related assets and marketing related assets so um, I, th I think you're right and Stephen's going to look I'm going on holiday in two days and Stephen's going to look forward to spending the next two weeks establishing how we go about doing that yeah yeah even if it's just the even if it's just the fair you know, kind of angle, right, that I think is important for an average recruiter who's not thinking about it, who's, you know, concerned about, you know, throughput and how they're being measured to just just think a little bit more, you know, critically about, um, you know, maybe some of the stuff that others think about, right, like am I using inclusive language and that kind of stuff. Yeah. 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 Absolutely. Right. Thanks, everybody. Really appreciate you all. If I can do anything for any of you, then please, if we're not connected on LinkedIn, connect with me and I will help you with anything I can help you with in return. Thanks very much. Thank you so much, Joel. Cheers, everybody. Bye. Thanks, everyone. Thanks, Toby.